Superheroes. Since I have been a child, I have been fascinated with superheroes. I am not ashamed to admit that I spent a large part of my childhood reading comic books. And that spilled over into some of my teenage years, and that spilled over into some of my early adult life. Okay, I still read comic books. <laughs> it's okay to laugh, but I know I'm not alone. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever wondered what it would be like to fly? That's what I thought. How many of you have ever wondered what it would be like to have super speed? And last, how many of you have ever wondered what it would be like to have super strength? Exactly. We would also have to admit that when we think about having those powers, our first thought is not saving someone or helping someone in need. <laughs> and the deeper truth is, is that with our normal everyday abilities, our first thoughts are not saving someone or helping someone in need. We fantasize about the super and not so much about the hero. When I realized that about myself, I decided to make a change. I decided to use the abilities that I do have as a musician to try to help the world be a better place and to help someone in need. How would I do that? Well, I had to realize that I had to take the things that I already had and use them to the best of my abilities. I want to show you what my journey has shown me, how to fly, how to have super speed, and how to have super strength beyond that of individual mere mortal men and women. So you're asking yourself, how would you do that? What do you have? What is it that you can do? How can you share it? Me, I have the gift of a music education. Thank you, mom and dad. And I teach that there is a common thread through all styles of music, a language that if you understand it, can help bridge the gaps between different styles of music and different cultures that seemingly have nothing in common. That language is called music theory. So I gave myself a name. Music Theory Man. Not an awesome name. But I was working with what I had. The day I decided to become a teacher, I was with some students that asked me a question. They said, why is it important for us to learn music theory? Why is it important for us to care about classical music? So I showed them this. They were amazed, not amazed so much because I took Beethoven and turned it into this funky, jazzy song. They were amazed because they suddenly realized they like classical music. <laughs> because of my demonstration, their opinion about classical music had been changed forever, meaning choices they would make in the future were changed forever meaning they were changed forever. Whoa. Now, I know all the teachers that are watching are thinking, yeah, good job, David. Way to invent education. 
<laughs> I know I didn't invent teaching, but for the first time, I wasn't watching from the sidelines. I wasn't just a student. Now I was a player in the game. You see, when you cross over and you become a teacher and you help someone to learn something new, you're unlocking possibilities and potential that cannot be measured. And a person who feels like they have unlimited potential feels like they can fly. And if you're instrumental in unlocking that potential in that person, you feel like you can fly. So I changed my name. I became a teacher. And I changed my name from Music Theory Man to <laughs> Funky Man. Way catchier. And even though my feet had never left the ground, I now knew what it felt like to fly. Another example that I used to use, Vince Guaraldi's Linus and Lucy, better known to the world as the Charlie Brown song. I would always start playing it the way that they knew it. Very happy. And then, without saying anything, I would slow the tempo down, change the major key to the minor key, and suddenly it became the saddest song in the world. Snoopy got sick. <laughs> now, if I were to take the left hand motif and add a minor second to it, and do the same thing with the melody, Suddenly, it sounds like bizarre chaos. Snoopy does not have health care insurance. <laughs> now, if I take the right hand motif, instead of using a major scale, I change it to a blues scale and add a couple of nice chords. Suddenly, it becomes gospel music. In just a few minutes, I introduced my students to the major mode, the minor mode, the minor second interval, dissonance, the blues scale, gospel music. And they're listening and taking it all in, all because they're familiar with what I started with. Lessons taught at super speed. How many of you in here remember learning the ABCs uh, by singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How many of you just now realize that Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and the ABC song were the same song? <laughs> when I was a kid, I had to learn and memorize and recite the preamble to the Constitution. And you know what helped me? Schoolhouse Rock. And I stood there in class going, in time, we the people in order to, to form a more perfect union. I mean, I did the entire preamble as if it were the song. If you have something to share with someone, part of your experience or your knowledge, you can capture their attention and enhance the speed of their learning by using something that they're already familiar with, just like I've done with you. Super speed. Now, flight. Super speed. How about super strength? I started to realize that music and people were very similar. If you take a piece of music, change a major scale to a minor scale by just altering two notes, you change the piece completely, just as we saw. If you take a person and you can change their idea about something, you can change that person completely. And if you take people with changed ideas and put them in a community or a group, you can change the group completely. This is true at Tufts University, where I direct the third day gospel choir. 
The Tufts University Third Day Gospel Choir every semester has almost 250 students coming together from all different backgrounds, belief systems, and experiences to come learn about African-American worship style and music. Every semester for the last 10 years, I've taught them all one song. Well, I've taught them lots of songs, but I've taught them all one song in particular in common. It's called I Need You to Survive, written by David Frazier. And the song teaches us the message that we're stronger as a community than we could ever be as individuals. I want to sing a little bit of that song for you, and I want you to help me sing it too. All you have to sing is I Need You to Survive. Can you say that? So when I point to you, I just want you to sing, I need you to survive. Try. Very good. Goes. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part. You see, it's not just different styles of music that are connected. We're all connected. And music brings us together and gives us power and abilities that fill us with amazement and wonder. And it shows us when we sing or work or play together that we're stronger as a community than we could ever be as individual, mere mortal men and women. Flight, speed, strength. Am I a superhero? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> We're not superheroes. We're not going to save the world from some alien invasion from another dimension. But even though we're not superheroes, when we use our abilities to help someone in need or to help them to connect, we don't have to fantasize about how it feels to be one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>